You know, one of the things that we wanted to cover was the thin blue line. Now, what does that actually mean? Historically speaking, uh, the thin blue line was referred to as a line. Now, if I paint you a picture of this line, it would be a rectangle or a flag, as it were, and a line would run right down the middle on the long part of the rectangle, and there would be black on the top and black on the bottom. The blue part was meant to represent the um, represent law enforcement agencies and their importance. Well, not their importance, and how they separated one side of the black and the other side of the black. Now, one side of the black were um, nefarious individuals, for the lack of better terms, people that are outside the laws. And the blue line would represent the police standing in between the general public, or they like to refer to them as citizens. Well, the crazy part about it, as I started going down that trail, was the thought of, man, has that line remained blue? I've been following the Austin Peaceful Streets um, project for a while now and watching them go forward. They've started to, uh, their own server, so they're uploading videos and cataloging stuff, and they continue to hold meetings on you know, tactics and strategies. We had a new uh, information server come online, or at least come visible to us. Currently, the Austin Peaceful Streets uses the Lone Star Liberty Bell. Well, the Lone Star Liberty Bell, it has its shortcomings, and um, of course, it's a second-generation system. Well, the new one has a little bit more promise, or, well, we don't know. So we're looking at it. It's something that Copwatch has put up. Well, the truth of the matter is, no matter what we think about it, things aren't going to change. People are going to start filming more and more encounters with police. And if you're in Austin and you run into the police, there's a good chance that you'll come into uh, contact with a Peaceful Streets member who will sit there and point their camera at the situation and record a neutral point of view. Well, it's nice to have a neutral observer, somebody that's just um, just recording the facts. Now, I know that law enforcement agencies have cameras and microphones on them, and they're recording all these different audio streams on their own. But who watches the watcher? I saw a couple articles today that were passed to me about officers getting in the way of um, other officers that are acting what is perceived to be wrong. You know, one officer was beating up a, a kid, and uh, a lady officer came in. Her name was Regina, Regina Tasca from Bogota. Well, she's going to be fired now. Seems that um, the mother called 911 for a mentally disabled um, teenager. And when the police got there, they used force to try to calm the situation. And a beating ensued. Well, Regina didn't like that. And you know, they weren't from Bogota anyways. They were from outside the area. They came in. She sat there and yanked the officer off and said, no, stop it, stop it. She managed to get the situation under control. But now she's getting fired. I think that's where that saying is, you stepped outside of that thin blue line. Now, did she step on the side of the nefarious ones? she step on the side of the of the civilians or the general population what color is that thin blue line has all the laws that have been induced into it since that saying um, came
came up with change the color from blue to maybe some other shade. You know, we came across a a link, and I'll dig it up real quick because I want to share it with you. It seemed really important. And the link was, you know, when I was researching the thin blue line, it was a chat room in one of the police officer forums. And the chat room, or the forum as it were, one guy asked, what is the thin blue line? Man, where is that document? What is the thin blue line? He said, it's a brotherhood. Truth is, I'm part of a, we're all part of the world's biggest gang, and I protect my family. (laughs) Man, I understand that, right? See, I grew up in California, and in California we saw an awful lot of strange stuff. And I remember working on stock cars, and, you know, we were young, and there were some older folks there. And my friend Brian, he used to, he had quite a temper, and he really liked to drink. So he'd come over, and we'd be wrenching on the car, and Brian would be all yabbing, talk to his wife and say, I ain't coming home, and yell and scream and says, I'm out of here. She's going to be coming over here. And then she'd show up and, yeah, she didn't want to um, want him to get in trouble. Well, she worked for the sheriff's department in Saratoga. For all I know, she still does work there. And more than one occasion, she'd come over to the, you know, to the shop we well, were working on the car. He said, where's Brian? Ah, he took off for a drive. He knew you were coming over. And she'd go over to the phone. We didn't have cell phones in those days. And she'd place a call to the sheriff's department. And she said, Brian's out there again. Can you guys rope him in? Sure enough, cars would go around and find Brian and you know, they'd park his car, or if there were two people in the squad car, they'd leave the car, or take the car home, and they'd bring Brian back to her. Didn't matter, he was drunk. He was kind of part of that blue line, because she was one of their dispatchers. It's kind of curious. Where is that line? Now, I'm all for taking uh, care of your family, and so forth. But do you remain blue if you're sitting there in that thin blue line and one of yours steps on, you know, I guess the nefarious side? Nah, I don't think you can be blue and black at the same time. But they'll pull you back in, say, don't do that again, bad boy. Well, I don't know. That's just one incident that I was a witness to in my life. There's been many incidents in my early days, and and I'm kind of rambling now as I'm missing my (laughs) co-host. Maybe he didn't want to call in. It's kind of a sticky subject I saw in the... um, I saw in that police forum that it was a sticky subject because you're either one of us or you're one of them. Well, that gets a lot of people to stop talking, but I don't think that that's what it's all about. And I really didn't want to talk about, you know, us or them. I wanted to talk to you about uh, the inevitable uh, transparency of the police department of the Sheriff's Department, of all the different law enforcement agencies. You know, folks, these cameras are going on, and the only ways to to stop them is going to be to outlaw them. Outlaw filming of law enforcement. Is that what we want to do? 
Now, Antonio Beeler started the Peaceful Streets Project out in Austin, and his idea was just to put some uh, witnesses out there on the street, neutral observers, just documenting, just documenting. Well, they know they're out there. They can tell the shirts, and they don't always wear their shirts on purpose. And Just because they're responding to calls from the Lone Star Liberty Bell. If you don't know the Lone Star Liberty Bell, Lone Star Liberty Bell is a notification system. All you do is you dial 512-34-UNITE. That sends messages to everybody that's uh, monitoring that. Well, the Peaceful Streets Group, they actually monitor that line. Yep. They'll respond to it. I've had first-hand incidents with them. I've dialed that number, and I've gotten a reply back. I've covered that before. But the truth is, all of a sudden, you've got people with the ability to stream media all over our nation, and they're doing it. Besides streaming media, you got phones everywhere that can take video. You got basic digital cameras that can upload digital footage up to the net, up to YouTube. Now that information is biased a lot of times because you know it takes an awful lot of energy to record an event and recording a nothing really happened event. Um, wow, I just recorded an event, and now I'm going to spend 15, 20 minutes, a half hour uploading a nothing event, and I don't even know what happened. So all of a sudden, all we've got is a bunch of videos of cops behaving badly. We all know people are people, and cops aren't anything different than people. They can behave badly and they can behave good. But we're not uploading a lot of good stuff, only bad stuff. In Austin, we find ourselves with a in a place where the police look at the independent observer with a camera as a negative thing, at the moment, that is. In the future, I'm not too sure. You see, law enforcement at the core, law enforcement at the core is to protect and serve. And that additional camera, that unbiased footage, you know, really should be seen as a benefit, not a drawback. But we've seen, you know, displays of, I guess I'd call it tampering with evidence as police officers shine their flashlight on uh, independent observers of a crime scene, destroy evidence. Well, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Never really thought I was going to be a lawyer. <laughs> I don't really want to be a lawyer. Hey, I think I got somebody on the line here. I'm going to kind of like bring him on. Let's see if it's my brand. Let's see. Hey, Rick, are you on the line? What's going on? Yeah, what's up, Steve? No, I, I was just ranting. You know I can do that sometimes. <laughs> How are you doing, man? I'm living the dream, man. Really, it is a dream, huh? <laughs> sometimes it feels like a nightmare. <laughs> well, it's the truth. Hey, you know, you've, you've done a lot of work on um, looking into cameras and streaming technology, right? Yeah, I've done some looking into it, yep. Right, because you, you mentioned you're the only reason I know of Bamboozer, or I think that's what they're called. I installed that on my phone, and I've been playing around with that one. I've been using the Ustream application and the Justin TV and Vital, but Bamboozer seems to have the best video capability. Did you ever do it like a Side by side study on that? No, not yet. Definitely something I'd like to do. Um, the reason I went uh, to Bambuser is because 
Um, well, I, I, originally I was using Quick, but uh, and originally Quick would allow you to stream your video uh, privately back to your account, so it wasn't made public unless you made it public. But somewhere along the line, they seem to have changed that. So if you mm. record, it has to be public right off the bat. But uh, Bambuser allows you to record privately and, and make it public later if you want to. Oh, okay. And that that stores um, geographical information as well, right? Right. Sure does. Like, like where your location is. Uh, that's interesting. Hey, that that um, God, I, I remembered that name of the unit that controls your or monitors your turn signals and speed and direction and all that, but I forgot the name of it. What was it called? It's the uh, Protect All system from ProtectAllSecurity.com. Mm-hmm. Now you said that yeah. you have one of the deluxe versions, and there's a basic starter version, right? Or they yeah. have various versions, and you know, multiple channels. I think mine's kind of in the middle, uh, eight channel. They have some that are four channel, and I think they have some that are sixteen channels and more. Um, and they, they they list that up on the website. Um, mine, I think, would probably be middle of the road. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I've been um, I've been doing live streaming now for I don't know, just a. A handful of months, maybe six at the most, but um, I find it fascinating all the different hardware problems that I've had, like you know the manufacturers I currently run an l g marquee, and for live streaming in particular, the microphone faces the display so you can hold it up to your ear and so forth, and so when you're shooting it as a camera, it's really miking you best, not your object facing forward so I've been working at dealing with uh, different audio qualities for that and I'm looking at using a, a, a shotgun microphone I just went down to this Fry's Electronics here and looked at a few different over-the-counter type solutions um, you ever thought of implementing one of those in um, in your vehicle system is that something like a, a directional microphone yes it is Hmm. Yeah, that would be uh, great, um, especially when you're using the car to record interactions for uh, other people. So um, I think that would be something really nice to have mounted off the front. That way you can park, you know, in the vicinity where you're you're not interfering and you're not uh, you're not even going to draw the attention of the uh, police officer. And yet at the same time, you'd be able to record uh, and audio is one of the more important components, I think, of of recording. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I always thought about it, but I haven't done it. Yeah, because I was watching some video on some police stops that were, you know, recorded. and It's interesting to actually get that information, but a lot of them, you've got objects that are in motion all around you, right? So all of a sudden there's a stop, and for one reason or another, the person in the car doesn't want to get out, and he's recording the whole incident. And, you know, a lot of times the person never gets out of the car, right, because it was the stop was just nothing. Um, but so if you had like a uh, pan-tilt-zoom camera, Logitech kind of makes one with a, a directional microphone so you can actually steer the thing. You could actually... Mm -hmm. um, follow the conversation as it moves around. Um, I don't know. I've just been thinking a lot about how to increase the quality of the recordings and, and get more information because I'm sure a lot of people have. And I know you're looking into different innovative techniques for protecting yourself in a car just in case you bump into one of those uh, less scrupulous <laughs> police officers. Yeah. Yeah, so, we're um, looking into. Go ahead. Yeah, we're looking into a couple of things. Um, I know I've we've talked before about uh, a couple of uh, technology reviews already. Uh, one of the things I'm working on right now, and I'm actually trying to work with a, an Austin-based company on uh, some software. It would be a, a remote software system, basically just remote FTP, mm -hmm. so that you could trigger it from inside your vehicle very quickly with one button button press and it would go to your DVR system 
and then just start downloading video and audio from the last five minutes from when you press the button, and then it would continue to keep downloading that information. So it wouldn't have to stream it. It could just download it, and it would already be configured to know, you know, and when he presses the button, you know, five minutes prior to that and keep going until it's sold otherwise. Um, once we get that sorted out, we're going to look into the cheapest DVR system we can find that's connected to the Internet, and that's going to be something we're going to, uh, we're going to offer up to people as an alternative. Hmm. No, I don't know if I've introduced Rick. You know, he's from the Veterans um, Against Police Abuse, and uh, there was quite a lively discussion on the Glock Forum recently when the um, some police officer found his video and obfuscated or, well, altered the name of your, your organization and turned it into the Veterans Against Police, I believe it was, and man, some of the stuff that was said in that thread, I couldn't believe I was hearing police talking. That was yeah, like, it was like children. Pretty, uh, yeah, it was really pretty irresponsible. Um, you know, up until I had joined their forum to defend myself, these guys hadn't, they didn't know anything about me except that I, you know, was from a group, Veterans Against Police Abuse, and that. I had put some defensive surveillance, you know, camera systems in my car. And based on that alone, the language that came from these people, you know, accusing me of being a nut job and a wacko and, uh, you know, the next movie theater, you know, mass murderer, all all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's just kind of shocking. It's like they equate, um, you know, you taking your life into your own hand by defending it, you know, being a responsible American to look out for yourself and your family. Um, it, it seems like they equate that uh, to being crazy. Um, as if right. to say that there are no police that lie, like that never happens, which of course we know isn't the case. It does happen and it has devastating effects when it does. So I was a little shocked at the irresponsibility in the language. Yeah, I was definitely taken back. You know, I sent you that link to, and you know, I can't find it right now, or I'd throw it out in the chat room. But the um, um, that link to what was that? Police dot com. It was a thread. I think it was two thousand six. Officers, officers dot com or officers forum. Is you talking about the one on the thin blue line? Yeah, that was rather disturbing, wasn't it? I've, I've never thought yeah. that I'd hear it so blatantly said. Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about police as the world's largest gang, right? But I've never heard somebody claiming to be a police officer from one of their forums saying, we are, and you're either one of us or one of them. That was kind of, wow, pretty hard. Yeah, they, yeah, they really internalized it there, and it was I mean, on the, the silver lining is that you get to see a glimpse of, you know, their attitudes there. Um, but, uh, yeah, they they said, yeah, we're part of the gang, and, and right or wrong, we look out for each other. Definitely not the attitude that we need to be getting from our public servants, uh, not at all. Yeah. So, so we have this new phenomenon, right? And I guess it happened probably in... 2007, no, probably around 2004, 2003, right, when we started getting lots and lots of uh, cameras, right, digital cameras, mm. and I think that's about the time YouTube came out um, or became really popular, and then people would upload videos to the Internet of things they thought were interesting, so we started seeing a stream of police abuse videos coming up there. And now we've entered this realm, I believe it's like last year, the last few years of live streaming video. I guess it started with Justin TV, but it really didn't hit its heyday until we've got the iPhone and all these Android things. And, you know, it's not going to stop. There's, there's really, um, I was pondering before you joined me, you know, we're we're getting a lot of biased information as well because you know I watching the the thread on um the peaceful streets forum I got 
firsthand confirmation of how much trouble it is to actually take a video of the incident, then go home, and then upload it to the Internet. Whereas, you know, you or I have already worked through those systems and maybe we're, you know, we have an understanding of the technology. But let's say you're more likely to actually upload a video of a nefarious, you know, uh, police officer than something that's really boring. It didn't really happen, so, or, or nothing really happened. So all of a sudden it's kind of skewed. Um, that's one of the reasons I kind of liked my ultimate dream for peaceful streets you know just go there shoot it upload it whether it's interesting or not and then catalog catalog it but i don't think uh antonio beeler is actually getting any kind of uh how do we say uh, a cooperation from the austin police department they're not helping him train his people or coming out and saying hey Come on, thank you. You know, we need all the evidence we can get. Help us. We need help. Um, am I wrong in that? Have you heard anything different? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't really heard anything about that. I mean, my understanding is uh, they wouldn't release dash camera footage, even though they're charging him with a felony. Um, mm-hmm. They wouldn't uh, release the dash camera footage. So. I think there's a culture out there where, you know, uh, recording the truth of events isn't something that they necessarily do for the the good of the people they serve. It's something that they do when they can use it uh, to back themselves up. So if it's caught, you know, a couple of officers, um, you know, breaking the law or lying, you know, they're, they're hesitant. Uh, I, you hear that story a lot. Um, which just goes to show why it's so important for Americans to record stuff themselves because you can't count on them to record, uh, and if they do record, to hand it over to you. Mm, yeah, definitely. I've, you know, I've worked with friends that are subpoenaing, you know, video footage, and all sorts of weird stuff happens. DVDs get, you know, sold to you that have no content on them, and strange codex and just seems like a real mess now i understand we're walking into you know a new reality where they have to produce this information but um or not one of the two but transparency will come sooner or later and you know Mm -hmm. i don't know it's the antonio bueller's uh stuff is just so inspiring um Kit posted in the the forum just uh, what was that earlier today um, a request for help from Peaceful Streets for a protest they're going to be going on later this week, and that was inspiring in itself. You know, it's yep. like I want a neutral observer, somebody outside my group, to come in and help protect me, right? That's not involved. Uh, Peaceful Streets doesn't have any kind of a political agenda. Uh, Other groups may or may not, right? But a camera is just a camera. So I'm kind of going out on a a limb just wanting to talk about, well, what are law enforcement officers' views on peaceful streets? I've contacted a bunch of uh, sheriffs and police officers that I know from uh, for various walks of life, people that don't agree with me whatsoever, um, some that I I don't know how we line up. Some I know they take a strong constitutional stand. And I wonder what the constitutional sheriffs and constitutional police officers, you know, what do they think about these cameras? Have you, are, are you aware of the Constitutional Sheriffs Association, uh, Richard Max thingy? I am uh, familiar with uh, Sheriff Mack from Oath Keepers, but that's um, but that's about it. Yeah, that's his um, that's his gig. He it's I believe it's called CSPOA. CSPOA. I'm gonna do a quick query on that. But I, you know, I was just 
this is all short notice. Anybody that ever hears this or anybody that's sitting on the line, <clears throat> we had a like a, a gig scheduled and I canceled it and I I contacted Rick and I said, Hey, you know, I really need to talk and I really think there's something that needs to be talked about here. Um yeah, it is C S P O A dot org. And right now so that's a lot a lot of law enforcement agents or law enforcement or former law enforcement people that support the constitution. Mm-hmm. And as I sit there and I start thinking about it, I'm kind of curious as to their point of view because nothing in the constitution that I can remember would come up against, you know, normal people filming, you know, law enforcement. You know, and I do see that it has some um, need for, God, let's say, um, discretion. You know, they've got a trainer over there at Peaceful Streets that goes over tactics and procedures, right, and how to stay out of harm's way. Mm-hmm. You know, I would, I would think that the police department would say, okay, you're going to exist. You have the right to exist. Maybe we can talk to you a little bit about how not to get in our way and instead of shining flashlights and putting horses in front of cameras, right. that they'd actually, you know, sit there and go, okay, this is the media. Because they don't treat the media that way. And um, and they are the media, though. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I think- the Constitution, I mean, certainly does speak to... Uh- speak to uh, recording public servants and it says that uh, you know the we have freedom of the press and the first amendment the very first amendment and uh, and obviously that applies to us and from my understanding um uh of you know the more original uh, understanding of course I'm not a lawyer but freedom of the press was you know somebody with a printing press who ran a newspaper or a newsletter or a pamphlet you know there's a lot of pamphleteers that put out pamphlets. These were not, this wasn't Fox News and CNN. These were normal American people who had something to say. So the Constitution certainly does defend our right to record the police. And common sense does as well. These are public servants. They work for us and they're in public. We want to make sure that they're doing their job correctly. So um, I think, uh, obviously I'm not law enforcement, but I think, uh, you know, good law enforcement officers, and they are certainly out there, and we have to always remember that, they're going to have uh, the, view, the same view that any good American will, which is that we need to um, do our jobs and protect the, the public as we're paid to do, while also preserving their liberties and protecting their liberties um, in accordance with the Constitution and in accordance with the law. Really, the two camps, you know, the people who have the cameras and who are on the streets filming the police, and the good police who are on the streets have the same goal in mind as long as they're honest about it and they don't treat it, you know, the police officers don't treat their employment as something like being in a gang, like we've already talked about from that one forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of curious that you brought that up. Um, I've been made aware of a, a couple law enforcement officers this week that are facing, you know, the axe for the, you know, lack of a better term, because they stood up for, you know, the person getting beat on on the on the ground, and um, there seems to be no outrage for that, and yeah, that's a shame. But did you? Okay, so. <laughs> This is one that I really enjoyed, right? And I think I I, I hammered on it a lot. But um, Jessica Holly out in Oakland, what did you think about that whole thing? Did you see that video of her sitting there? All of a sudden, we had what five squad cars blocking, you know, this big street mm-hmm. in Oakland, and it looked right. like an army. What, what what were your thoughts? How did that go down? Tell me. Well, I perused it. I think I probably watched the first uh, 10, 15 minutes or so of it, and I kind of skipped through the video. A couple of thoughts that came to mind. First, uh, it would have been nice to have video of what happened before the officers pulled their weapons. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the other thought I have is there's a line between 
being a protester, which of course every American has the right to protest, and being a responsible um, press member, I guess, for the lack of a better word, like Peaceful Streets is doing. There's, right. there's, there's, there's a fine line between being a protester and going out to document um, the police. And watching that video, she seemed to be more of a protester to me. And the reason I say that is because um, she uh, did a lot of yelling and screaming, which mm-hmm. is something you expect a protester to do. Now, somebody from Peaceful Streets or a person who's, you know, desire is to document what's going on would probably not want to be screaming in the camera for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, it might lead a cop to believe that they're interfering. And number two, um, it's, it's, uh, you know, masking what could be, you know, vital evidence, audio evidence, if it's your voice and not the police officers or the, you know, the person being arrested, you know, that's not really all that useful. Um, and she used a lot of profanity. There's nothing wrong with using profanity, but again, it falls more under like kind of a protest thing. And I understand she's angry, but when I watched it, I thought, uh, you know, she could. Uh, personally, I thought she was interfering. To be honest. Oh, I definitely say she was interfering. You know, she was part of the situation, and um, maybe even rightfully so, because. Uh, well, we don't know because all those other cameras that you saw around there, like you said, we didn't see the whole picture because all <laughs> those videos, what did they do? Stay on the compact flash and get deleted in the week? You know, they get uploaded? Are they, you know, we don't know. You know, I guess that's one of those things Peaceful Streets is trying to deal with with that new video server that they've put up and trying to get everybody to use the same thing. We definitely... <laughs> face a struggle, whereas, you know, uh, aggregating all the disparate streams, to say the least, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. uh, going to be a challenge. But, you know, the good thing that she did do, you know, whether she was acting as a protester or, or acting as responsible press that wasn't there to interfere, the one good thing that she did was she made the public's presence known just by having the camera there chances are she kept, uh, you know, she lessened the chance that there would be some sort of unnecessarily, uh, unnecessary violence that went on. So that's very important. I don't mean to be, you know, to demean her at all. She did a great job. Um, she had cameras there. She was documenting what was going on. Um, but from a peaceful streets sort of perspective, I would imagine they would probably say, you know, that there are a couple lessons learned, um, Right. Good Good for you, standing up. You know, it was really good where she um, asked for the person's name. Do you want to give us your name? Right. He said he wanted yeah. to give us his name. You know, that would be a decent thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. The Yeah, it's kind of crazy because if she stayed neutral and all those guys stayed neutral, there were two people there that were being, um, let's say, loud. Right, there would be Jessica and another voice out in the you know background that were yelling at the cops and you know poking at the situation. Those guys mm-hmm. were probably heading downtown pretty darn quick. Uh, you know they don't usually draw their guns and put you in their police car and just to hold you for a few seconds and you know let you, let you go. So hey, on the protest side. You know, she definitely was a, a protester, not a peaceful streets person. And it'll be interesting where that stuff ends up going. You know, was that her two seconds of fame or 17 minutes? Or is this thing going even more crazy as we, we face issues with um, big uh, discontent all over the place? And who knows? I don't know. There's just so much going on. I'd like to um, say, uh, I don't know, you know, to Sheriff Mills or uh, Chief A. Strike from Fredericksburg, you know, if you're listening right now, I emailed you this, and 
I don't want you to think about this as some kind of an attack by me or anything. I've been fair to you all the time, right? You know, I try to be a neutral position on this. Um, But I would like to start opening the discussion about how we're going to deal with these cameras and training all these law enforcement agencies to work with the surveillance network, not against it, because what's good for the goose is what's good for the gander. And the truth is we are all out for uh, transparency. Now, that thin blue line, that scares me. That scares me a bit because you guys, if you have to try to protect one another, if somebody does something bad, you know, all of a sudden you're on the other side of the line, man. You know, how do you guys deal with that? Because I know that comes up. But so this went out to a lot of law enforcement agencies. And, you know, I'll be making some phone calls tomorrow, and we'll talk about this in person. We don't need to do it over the air or a live thing. But this isn't an issue that's going away. And we can fight each other on it, or we can try to work together. And I won't fight you. I'll just talk. You know, and nobody wants to fight. Peaceful Streets isn't about you know, attacking police. It's about recording actual actions as they go down, neutral, training the people that want to, you know, to deal with that straight up. So I'd reach out to any officers that may be listening from APD and, you know, Officer Johnson, you know, hey, feel free to give me a call. My name is Steve O'Brien, and my phone number is 661 661- Six two one five two three seven. I'd like to hear your opinion on you know what's going down over there, and how you see it. Do you see it as a negative thing? You know, I know you your your face comes up quite a bit, and you know you interact with a lot of people. You probably know the forums and the threads that I've been discussing tonight. Right, you're really in charge of that kind of stuff, um, but you don't have to. But just remember, dude, all these people are just human, and all we're looking for is an even deal, and there's no reason we shouldn't be able to get it. But, okay, get off my soapbox, and let's get back to technology, because you're the tech guy, at least in the um, the avenue of personal protection in the car. Now, let's say I was – so I know you guys over there at Veterans for – Police Accountability, or no, Veterans Against Police Abuse. Um, you, you're working at trying to figure out a basic entry-level model, right? And you were, that's why you, you talked about that piece of software, the FTP software, so you could have like a handful of cameras and then a button to push to stream it out there. What can somebody actually get into something today? What's their their What's the entry level price? Would you think? Okay, for oh well, the first uh, the entry level I think would be a smart device. That's probably the cheapest um, way to do it, the best way to do it. Um, you know, whether that's an iPhone or a Droid, just something that has internet access, that has a recording application that can stream it over the internet so that it's secured. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how much that would go for. There's various plans, and probably most people, I would imagine, uh, probably have a, a smart device uh, these days. Um, that's the first thing. The uh, the second thing I would I would go um, and recommend would be the uh, Jow Tech ADR 3320, which is a uh, a small camera that's um, created uh, from a company uh, in South Korea, and uh, it's just like a radar detector, essentially. plugs in your cigarette lighter, you mount it just like a radar detector, and it has two cameras that uh, will record the interior of your vehicle and uh, out the windshield. So you've got two cameras there, wide angle, plus a microphone, and it also records GPS position and speed. That's all recorded to an SD card, but it also records it to a, a USB drive if you want it to, which you can hide in your um, in your vehicle. I would say those two things are really that's the entry now for a stand by one. Mm, okay. Sorry about that. 
Um, the uh, the Dow Tech uh, unit costs about uh, four or five hundred dollars for that, and there's various models of it. Okay, then you'd need to be picking up some cameras. Now, what kind of an interface does the Dow Tech have? Does it like have RCA jacks to plug in um, cameras into that? Is that the to support well, USB? Actually, well, with the Jow Tech unit, it's got the two cameras built into it, so you can't actually add any more cameras. Um, but if you want to access the footage, you would just pop the SD card out, put it into your uh, computer, or if you record to the USB thumbstick, you could just take that out and plug it into your computer. And when you play it back, you've got you know uh, audio and video from the two different cameras at the same time, and it'll also bring up a Google map that will show your location on Google Map as the video is playing, and it will also show your speed and a couple other things, um, inertia-type sensors. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as adding more cameras, it's not uh, – it doesn't do that. Hmm. Okay. Do, are there any – basically, you'd need to go to a DVR, which doesn't give you the kind of stuff that the Jow Tech does, right? The Jow Tech actually gives you the turn signals are on, your speedometer, your GPS oh. stuff. It has some logic in it, right? Uh, the, yeah, the Jow Tech um, – It'll have uh, just a couple of sensors. It doesn't put your turn signals in there. It'll just be your position and speed and uh, inertial data. If you're, you know, turning to the left, turning to the right, inertial data, um, that'll be in there. But uh, the DVR system that we were talking about before, the Protect All, which is really kind of is the best system I've seen, um, that's the one that will wire into the car and record uh, your turn signals and um, and doors being open if you're reversing, if you're braking, uh, and data like that. That one's a little bit more pricey, though. That one will run about $4,000, but that, you know, and also includes that AV360 uh, covert rearview mirror that has four cameras and a microphone inside of it. Um, so it's a very mm. capable system. But uh, yeah, with, it, with those cameras in the the rear view mirror, what kind of a – do those all come back on one video channel or do they do like uh, 640, 480? What kind of resolution do they do? Or do you, how's yeah, it the comes output? back um, – it comes back uh, actually on uh, four video channels and one audio uh, channel. So, um, yeah, uh, as far as the resolution goes – uh, I don't really know off the top of my head. Um, it is uh, it is good enough uh, video to be clear, uh, but to be honest, I, I really couldn't get into the numbers. Um, yeah, but uh, okay. protectallsecurity.com, if you go to that website, um, you'll be able to see all their specs right there. Hmm, okay. Yeah, it was kind of I, – I love cameras. I used to do, you know, video surveillance stuff for corporations for a living at one point in my life, and it's, it's fascinating to watch the prices drop, drop, drop. Yeah. It's, just, it's getting crazy, and we can do so much stuff. Hey, let's go – let's move on real quick to um, – to things like iCitizen, right? You know, you were, were you aware of that little system that's set up in Austin called the Lone Star Liberty Bell before Peaceful Streets? I was not familiar with that one. I was familiar with Porcupine. Okay, and that's basically an extension of Porcupine, right? Right. Well, basically. What about this new one? Did you did you take a look at that at all? The Copwatch one, the 800 number, I believe it was. Uh, I saw the post on there, but I actually didn't get in. I didn't take a, a detailed look, um, but uh, yeah. it looks like it's another, you know, developer or another group of individuals who have an idea um, with the same goal. So, you know, I support it. Um, totally, you know, it's a lot like what you were talking to me about, I Citizen, right? You know, yeah. you probably went through those same thoughts as far as their developers go. You know, they, let's say, the Porcupine, I'm kind of familiar with that. That's just a asterisk open source um, phone system with like a PHP front end to carry out various tasks. Uh, but one thing that came up this week was the concept of 
actually geotagging the uh, location that the call comes into. I'm on 4th and Main. I call in. Well, a normal phone doesn't necessarily transmit data across, so we're stuck in either the person has to go, I'm on 4th and Main. This is so-and-so. And the computer is going to have to, well, one way of doing it is passing it through some kind of a speech recognition um, IVR, right, or an ACD system, and, you know, trying to grab a location out of that based on their phone number, the NPA, NSX of the, the phone itself, or where the person's registered and do some kind of logic in there, or hand it to a human who tries to figure that out and puts you know, geographical tags. Uh, do you ever think about that at all with the iCitizen application, how to handle the technical details, or did you just kind of go, well, it, we want to be able to do that? Or is that um, part of it? Yeah, we haven't got into the uh, into the technology so much, though I would expect it would be either uh, an ASP.NET or possibly a PHP, uh, PHP uh, remote server that would handle uh, the applications, which the applications obviously would be Cocoa or, you know, for the iPhone apps, and then uh, I'm not sure what language we would use for the Droid. Um, but uh, those those applications, being that they'd come from smartphones, would automatically be able to send location, you know, coordinates uh, when they access the remote server. So we'd have the location um, ability uh, there right off the bat. Of course, the backside to that is, you know, if you don't have a smart device, then you can't use those applications. But, um, but that's why, you know, Lone Star, uh, Liberty Bell, and other uh, services are there. So, right, you know, and John Bush, when I first talked to him about the Lone Star Liberty Bell, he says, you know, well, this is the phone version. I want every version. You know, I want signals, and he's more about a community thing. They. Lone Star Liberty Bell wasn't a uh, necessarily just for uh, tracking, um, you know, traffic stop points, you know, where they're pulling over people and, you know, uh, self-protection in case you get stopped by the police and you wanted a neutral observer. Uh, it was also for intended for, let's say you're having a problem with your neighbor or something like that. You call up over there and you're have the possibility of somebody actually coming to your aid. That concept of mutual aid I just found out yesterday is a concept, a concept that's talked about in law enforcement a lot of times. They, uh, mutual aid as defined in law enforcement terms would be one police department contacting, let's say, the sheriff or the FBI or something like that. And the mutual aid, you know, they have defined criteria of how that the authority goes in their mutual aid. But this would just be for individuals, not for how, you know, we react. So so the cop watch thing is definitely different than the mutu uh, mutual aid system that John Bush created. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to, to play out, you know, as we watch one week after another, something new comes from that group. Rather spectacular, you know. Yeah. Nothing standing still. Some very talented individuals over there. Just to watch, uh, you know, what Antonio has done, you know, taking his networking skills and uh, and and linking up with uh, other people who are already vested in, you know, transparency and accountability, and and to see them organize um, and to hand out cameras, a hundred cameras, it's just genius. Um, I think uh, what they're doing has a lot of legs, so I'm very interested in uh, keeping up with them because I really do think they uh, they could be a catalyst for something nationwide that could be extremely beneficial. Yeah, I'm not aware of anybody else that's doing this at all. No. Yeah, I'm not either. And I'm looking. <laughs> you know, I'm talking to people, and, you know, I get everybody's interest when I start telling the stories, right? I, I lock people's attention when I'm face to face with them, and I said, "Let me tell you a story about Austin." And you know, they're like, "Huh? Really? That's happening?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's real, and it's it's about peace, right? It's not about hostility and force. We don't need force." And nope. 
that's that's the crazy part. You know that link that I sent you, um, of, of where the one guy says he's part of a gang, right? Um, mm-hmm. Also, it's like first up, what caught me was the the one guy lamenting about how uh, one officer handles so many thousand miles and so many stops, and then if he screws up just once. He's out of here, right? Right. Now, I understand that, right? It's a tough job, right? And mm-hmm. you're, you're held to a high aspect. But there's also another, there's a couple of problems in there. The laws that they're asked to manage may be wrong. Now, um, that's the, the one part about the, the sheriff he used to, you know, play within the the republic model of the United States of America, where he'd say, no, that law is like, just stupid. I'm not going to enforce it. Well, they enforce all these laws, and we keep adding more and more laws. And so that makes our officers work more and more and more, even if it's really stupid. And it just gets... Um, we're increasing their workload. They're programming the public to be dependent on them. Dial 911. Don't get involved. Call the police. Do this. You protect yourself. Don't get involved with that. Call the police. So we increase the dependence on the police department and take um, tell people don't deal with stuff yourself. We decrease personal responsibility and throw that off onto law enforcement, and we constantly increase the number of rules, then, of course, you know, if they do, so we need more cops because we have more laws and they have to, you know, do this, not to to say that they don't have bad training in there because I know a lot of cops have told me that, you know, they're told to lie to you um, to try to get you to admit, you know, that you're breaking a law somewhere. Lead them into it. The chances are they're leading, they're doing something, right? And so by doing that, they're... But so this one officer, right, is, is caught in a place where they're continually pushing out laws. The justice in there keeps getting injustice.